You've just hit credits on Resident Evil 4, and you're all set to put the game down and move on to something else. But wait, there's a small itch you feel. New Game Plus is right there. I bet Hardcore would be a ton of fun. Plus, there's plenty of guns to upgrade, and Leon would look really cute in those cat ears. Me, how? Follow this feeling. Itch. Hello stranger and welcome to No HUD, the show all about finding new and interesting ways to play your favorite video games. Today we're looking at Resident Evil 4 and why it's a huge mistake to stop after your first playthrough. That's because Resident Evil 4 has so much more to offer past a first time experience. I'm talking gameplay changes on higher difficulties, unlockables that offer fun bonuses, and a whole host of challenges to pursue. The game is a masterclass in replayability with new layers to it with each run, and peeling them back reveals one of the most highly replayable single player experiences of all time. Over here, stranger. Even during that first playthrough, Resident Evil 4 is already priming you for your second and maybe even a third. It accomplishes this by not giving you everything in a single playthrough, and in doing so, lays down the seeds for you to pick it up again. You likely unlocked a bunch of challenges, something you might not really have paid attention to, but hey, these seem doable and the rewards are really cool looking. And of course, in classic Resident Evil fashion, the game gives you a grade and a runtime at the end and uh, ooh, uh, uh, a B rank. Yeah, I Guess that's pretty good, but I mean, look, you could shave down a few hours. You know a game is something special when you're already planning that next playthrough while still working on the first. What challenges should I go for? What weapons should I use? What charm should I accessorize with? And most importantly, what costume should I wear? Cat ears? <laughs> Not yet. Now you can always start with a fresh save, but I think it is best to jump right into New Game Plus on a higher difficulty. Resident Evil games have a history of creative higher difficulties that are more than just enemies equal harder, and the same is true for Resident Evil 4. On hardcore, enemy variety and placement is mixed up, keeping you on your toes. Puzzles are made more complex, and if you bump things up even further to professional, only perfect parries work, and there's no autosaves. The leap from standard to hardcore alone is substantial, so much so that I wouldn't recommend it as a first time experience. It can be rather painful if you aren't prepared. And yet it sings on New Game Plus, where you get to bring in a fully decked out briefcase. But don't get cocky, you cool jacket, swoopy hair hunky you. Sure, you might suplex your way into a new game plus on hardcore with a fully locked and loaded arsenal, letting you blast through Ganados like the badass cool guy you are, but as the game goes on, the difficulty ramps up and it still proves to be quite the challenge. This all makes your second playthrough feel just as fresh as the first. Now you're truly starting to flex those combat muscles you've been building up all this time. It will now! Time to cause some mayhem! It's not just about the difficulty though. Resident Evil 4 hits you with dozens of challenges that can be attempted and completed during any playthrough. This is where things start to get really interesting, because some of these force you to shake up your playstyle. Most of the game's big set pieces offer a unique alternate challenge. Some are straightforward but difficult, like taking zero damage during the minecart sequence. Others are a real son of a bitch, like defeating Verdugo without bathing them in liquid nitrogen. There's also more long-term challenges, like Minimalist, which asks you to complete the game using only a pistol and a knife. That sounds tough, but the game actually sets you up thanks to another challenge, destroying all 16 Clockwork Castellans. This rewards you with an indestructible knife, an invaluable tool to help complete Minimalist. And that's when you notice that all of these challenges and rewards start to really loop into one another. It's not just about doing one, it's about how completing one gives you a reward that then makes the other one even easier to complete. And that's not the only reward you can unlock. There are a host of bonus goodies that give real incentive to do these challenges. Like how about pairing that sweet pinstripe suit with the Chicago Sweeper. 
Gotten a rank on hardcore? Congratulations, Ashley has a suit of armor, so you, uh, you, you, just, you don't need to worry about her anymore. She's fine. The game has now rewarded you for all your hard work by devolving into some good old-fashioned video game nonsense. I mean, for God's sakes, they let you buy the infinite rocket launcher on New Game Plus. Surely the game has shown you all it has to offer at this point. Or has it? Resident Evil 4 is the kind of game that makes you want to try speedrunning. And what I mean by that is the game is encouraging you to try to beat it as fast as possible, to master its mechanics, to become a true Resident Evil 4 connoisseur. And it helps that the game is built to be exploited in some really, really cool ways. The most striking example that has made the rounds is the ability to skip the game's infamous opening village by shooting the church bell tower. But it doesn't stop there, as this game is filled with little details like this. There's almost a, if you can imagine it, the devs probably thought of it type mentality here. We all know the rocket launcher is a great tool to one-shot bosses, but what about environmental obstacles? Easy. Want to skip a padlock door? Well, just toss a well-placed grenade through the window. Same goes for this AA gun. Or this wall during the wrecking ball sequence. Or how about a more game-breaking cheese, like placing a bunch of mines where you know a boss will spawn in. These are all really silly, and a ton of fun to do, but they also serve a greater purpose as an important tool for the game's ultimate challenge, obtaining S-plus rank on Professional. This monstrosity requires you to play Professional on a brand new game, meaning no carrying over any weapons or upgrades. You need to complete it in under five and a half hours and can only save 15 times. Which, uh, yeah, is less than one save per chapter. Accomplishing this run is no small task, requiring you to employ every trick in the book to pull it off. In a way, playing the game multiple times on New Game Plus, learning the encounters, and mastering the combat has prepared you with the knowledge to succeed. Plus, completing those other challenges helps as well, because you get to bring in any bonus rewards you unlocked, such as Ashley's Invincible Armor, the Unbreakable Knife, and the Chicago Sweeper, which gets infinite ammo as its exclusive upgrade meaning you can make things a little easier on yourself. It's still really hard, though. But it's all worth it. When Hunnigan finally bestows you with that coveted S+, you're rewarded with a sense of pride that few other challenges in gaming can bring. But even more importantly, you're finally given those sweet, sweet cat ears. What do the cat ears do again? Oh, they uh, give you infinite ammo. Whether intentional or not, Resident Evil 4 is an incredible example of how replaying a game can be just as, if not more rewarding, than the first playthrough. The game incorporates player advantage into its gameplay loop, letting you bring your tools and knowledge with you. It's designed to be poked at and broken, embracing alternate strategies. It all feels incredibly considered, and can truly be appreciated and recognized with multiple playthroughs. Resident Evil 4 is already an incredibly rewarding game on one playthrough alone, but it's all the more impressive how it continues to subvert players with each loop. It's also just incredibly cathartic to one-shot this with a rocket launcher to the face, or this or these Hey everyone, thanks for watching this first episode of No HUD. We air new episodes every Wednesday, so if you enjoyed this, we hope to see you next week. But that's not all you have to look forward to. GameSpot is actually launching a whole host of new shows, such as How It Saved, where Dave Klein dives into gaming history and the games, mascots, and people that saved their series from obscurity. The first episode is all about how the original Resident Evil 4 brought much-needed change to an, at the time, declining franchise. To celebrate all these great new shows, we're actually doing a gosh dang giveaway. Be sure to check out the pinned comment below for info on how you can win one of many prizes, including Resident Evil 4 Remake, Jedi Survivor, or even a PlayStation 5. Available to US residents only, terms and conditions apply. All right, F Mary kill. Leon, Louise, Ada. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, well, F Ada, uh, for sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'll marry, yeah. I'll marry Leon. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'll, yeah, and yeah I'll, you, kill, uh, I'll kill Louis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't feel good about it. No, uh, I don't either, but I mean, I think, 
I think that's the right choice. Yeah. Yeah.